there's no chance, no chance I'm adopting a dog that's just in, in his previous owner's body. No chance, no, no, no chance. Hello, what's that crack? What's that story? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're checking out the 15 pets that ate their owners. As you can see, I got a lovely pet monkey here. I hope he doesn't touch me. Lovely geezer. Uh, yeah, let's go. Only a cute pet can make you feel better, even after a demanding day. However, nature can go wild and wreak havoc through them. After hearing these crazy stories, you'll think twice about domesticating a wild animal. Take a look at these 15 pets that devour. Speaking of wild animals, look at these guns right here. Oh. Their owners, and with that, let's do this. Let's have it. Pigs. Pigs. How? Pigs aren't generally known to be violent How? compared to other animals on this list, but a shocking incident occurred involving Terry Garner, an Oregon pig farmer. One night, while he was out feeding his pigs, he never returned home. Concerned for his well-being, his family began searching for him, fearing he may have been kidnapped. After hours of searching, they discovered his glasses and fragments of his body inside the pig's enclosure. They speculated that he may have suffered a heart attack and collapsed before the pigs attacked his remains. Fuck. It was later revealed that the pigs had actually assaulted and overpowered him before he had a chance to react. Garner had previously reported being bitten by one of the animals. Domestic pigs, being twice the size of normal ones, can exhibit some violent tendencies. Then I hear the best thing to do is feed them to pigs. Fuck Monitor sake. lizard. That was... I never thought pigs. Pigs! Oh god, them dirty bastards. What? I'm guessing this person must have been a bit older. Yeah. Because, but well, yo, just imagine a pig. Oh, and they find a glass. <sighs> What's this shite? For reasons beyond human comprehension, Ronald Huff, a resident of Newark, owned not one or two, but seven Nile monitor lizards. The Nile monitor lizards were all between six and seven feet long. When he failed to show up for work on Monday morning, his colleagues grew concerned and alerted the police. Upon arriving at his apartment, the officers were met with a horrifying sight. The monitor lizards were feeding on Huff's lifeless body. The authorities took his body for autopsy, but the report failed to reveal the cause of death. However, it was clear that his demise wasn't natural, as he had been in good health prior to leaving his workplace. There was evidence that the lizards had been aggressive towards Huff in the past. This incident prompted the implementation of stricter regulations regarding the ownership of exotic pets in the United States. As a result, the United States Fish and Wildlife Services confiscated approximately 2,000 reptiles. Uh, it's the fact that you have seven lizards in an apartment. An apartment! And they're six foot, seven feet long. They've taken more than half the apartment already. How is this possible? Like, yo, I live in a two-bed apartment and I'm, I'm thinking, thinking of getting one goldfish. And I feel like that's going to take space. Imagine having seven lizards. Harry and Sally. Ronald Papo was a 60-year-old man who lived alone in his apartment. He owned two punks, Harry and Sally. Harry and Sally were loved and cherished by their owners until their death. Unfortunately, Ronald suffered a mental breakdown and became tired of life, leading him to commit suicide. The pugs were left starved and dejected, but they didn't raise the alarm upon discovering him lifeless. Several weeks passed without any food for the pugs. Desperate for sustenance, they survived by consuming the flesh of their owner's face, and eventually even resorted to digging deeper into his brain and torso. By the time help arrived, their owner's body was in an advanced state of decay. The authorities promptly intervened and took the animals to the local Humane Society, where they found a new home and were adopted. Although this is in New homes and adopted. I like dogs, but... There's no chance, no chance I'm adopting a dog that's just in, in his previous owner's body. No chance, no, no, no chance. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. Would you do that? Incredibly distressing. This case is relatively understandable compared to the subsequent animal featured in the video. Yeah. Simba. Um, how can I uh, prove myself to run? Olive Bell and his wife Kathy lived in Illinois and owned a small zoo on their farm called Cougar Bluff Enterprise. One of the animals in their care was a 500-pound African lion named Simba. Recognizing the need for careful handling, especially during feeding, they took great care in their responsibilities. 
However, tragedy struck in 2004 due to a simple mistake. Al, who was 52 years old at the time, was attacked by Simba while attempting to clean the lion's cage. Regrettably, he had forgotten to secure the giant cat in its secondary enclosure. The exact details of the attack remain unknown, but upon returning to the site, Kathy discovered Simba roaming freely outside of its enclosure. Concerned for her husband's safety, she promptly contacted the police for assistance. As Simba had become increasingly aggressive, the officers had no choice but to shoot the lion. Al's body was later recovered, and it was determined that he had bled to death from a massive bite to his leg. Oh my god. Gypsy. To be fair, he didn't even... I'm surprised. To be fair, the dog, the lion actually ate him. He didn't actually eat him, he just, he just bit him. But to be fair, when you, when you own all this kind of pets, you should know, yo, they're not meant to be enclosed. They're meant to roam free and big, far and big in the wilderness. They're not meant to be kept as pets. They're too... I'll keep my mouth shut. Keeping a Burmese python is already risky for adults, let alone when a child is present. Toddlers have a natural inclination to explore and may not pay much attention to potential dangers or injuries. In the case of Charles Darnell and Sharon Hare, they owned a Burmese python in their house while living with their two-year-old daughter, Cheyenne. Unfortunately, the eight-foot-long snake had escaped from its enclosure multiple times due to inadequate security measures. On a tragic day, the snake managed to escape again, but this time, it tightly coiled itself around their daughter, sinking its fangs into her forehead. The child couldn't survive the brutal attack. The incident happened in 2013 in West Palm Beach, Florida. Animal experts later discovered that the snake had not been fed for nearly a month and was underweight. Consequently, the couple was arrested, charged with third-degree murder, and ultimately convicted. They were subsequently sentenced to 12 years in prison. Do you, do you know how stupid you have to be? You have a two-year-old daughter in the same house. And you, have a, you have a big snake as well. How stupid is that? Oh my god. Two years. Two. Oh. Some people are not, some people should have been parents, man. Two. Oh. Bengal Tiger. It's evident that we can never be too certain about wild animals. These creatures prefer to roam freely in the wild rather than being confined in cages. Unfortunately, Cynthia Lee Gamble became the victim of her own choice when she was mauled and killed by a Bengal tiger she kept in her residence. Gamble was 52 years old and had been keeping tigers for over a decade. The tiger that attacked her was a 500 pound male named Tony. What makes her death even more astonishing is the fact that she was an experienced writer and editor of wildlife documentaries. She had even authored books on the subject and was listed as an animal coordinator for the movie Vertical Limit, released in 2000. Her body was discovered by a man who had come to her home to carry out a controlled burn. To enable the authorities to retrieve her body, a veterinarian was summoned to euthanize the animal. The tiger was subsequently transported to the University of Minnesota Veterinary Hospital for further examination and testing. Tony the Tiger wasn't great. Camel. If you, I feel like if you own all these kind of animals, you should be usually it's inevitable, you know, because like you never know what they're gonna do. They're not, they're not human beings, you know. They, they don't have feelings like us, you know. We develop feelings over the years, you know. We love people. They probably love you as well, but at the end of the day, it's an animal. It's got instinct. It's not like you know, like me and you that once we love someone, you know, mount. Even, even human beings love each other and they still kill each other. So imagine an animal. <sighs> A camel, you know? Camels are often considered calm and harmless animals, yeah, but there are instances where they can display excessive behavior. Younger camels are known to be more hostile compared to adults. Pam Weaver, a renowned exotic pet owner, had a variety of sheep and cattle in her possession. Despite her fondness for camels, she didn't personally own one. However, she decided to gift her husband a 330-pound camel on his 60th birthday. Unfortunately, it turned out that the animal was overly excited and made an attempt to mount the family's pet goat. Weaver initially dismissed the aggression, but things took a more serious turn, you could say, when the camel tried to mate with her one evening. She initially managed to fend off the camel, but it escalated its aggression by biting her and forcefully knocking her down. Eventually, the camel pinned her to the ground and tragically trampled her to death. Oh, God. Teddy the Black Bear Black bears are considered less dangerous compared to grizzly bears. However, these powerful animals still have the ability to overpower humans and cause severe injuries, potentially leading to death. One such incident involved Kellyanne Walsh, who became a victim of her black bear attack. 
Walsh had been cleaning the cage of a 350-pound black bear that she had raised since it was a cub. Unfortunately, she forgot to secure the brute in its secondary cage, creating an opportunity for an unexpected and tragic attack. When the children playing nearby witnessed the incident, they quickly called her neighbor, Scott, for help. Scott responded by shooting the bear with his rifle, effectively killing it on the spot. Ironically, it was later revealed that the family's license to keep exotic animals had expired. God. Scarf. Black bear, man. Black bear. Why? 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 Look how massive they are. And they're so quick as well. Why would you keep it? <sighs> Again, have you noticed all these places is in, is in the United States? Again, I have nothing against the United States. I love the United States. But you guys take things to the next, to the extreme. You don't hear about some geezer that lives in, in Birmingham having a, having a lion. <laughs> you don't hear about that. You don't. <laughs> but to be fair, I feel like it's the fact that there's so much space. So you guys feel like, once you, have, once, you have, once you live in houses where you have acres of land, you know, let's get a pet lion, a pet tiger. Just live your normal life, man. Why? Face the pit bull. Pitbulls have been associated with aggressive behavior leading to concerns about their reputation. However, it's important to approach this topic with accuracy and avoid making generalizations. While there's been many reported cases of pitbull attacks, it's essential to note that such incidents can occur with any dog breed. Focusing solely on negative instances can contribute to misconceptions. For instance, one case that gained attention involved a Florida woman and her family who were attacked by her own pet pitbull named Scarface while attempting to put a sweater on it. During the incident, Brenda, her husband, and her son resorted to stabbing the dog multiple times in order to defend themselves. Eventually, Scarface released its grip, allowing the family to escape. Animal control was then contacted, and they successfully subdued Scarface using Scarface. a taser. Scarface. Travis the chimpanzee. Oh, I remember Keeping this. Keeping wild animals oh, as pets. Oh, this is messed up. This is absolutely messed up. <sighs> I remember this story. Oh my God. Nah, this is messed up. This can lead to disastrous consequences, particularly when dealing with chimpanzees. Despite being shorter in height than the average human, chimpanzees possess twice the physical strength. One notable case involves Travis, a chimpanzee who had appeared on TV on a talk show alongside his owner, Sandra Harold. In 2009, tragedy struck when Harold asked her friend Charlotte Nash to help return the 200-pound primate to his cage. What should have been a straightforward task quickly turned into a horrific ordeal. Travis attacked Nash, inflicting severe injuries to her hands and biting her face. Despite Harold's attempts to intervene, Travis grew increasingly agitated with each intervention. Harold contacted the police, who arrived and ultimately shot the chimpanzee. Nash, as a result of the brutal attack, became the first patient to undergo a groundbreaking double hand and face transplant. Fuck. Yeah. Hungry. You guys need to check that out. It was, it was so messed up. She had to get new eyes. Literally, she's blind. She has no hands as well. I'm like, all these animals, you could love them for 10, 15 years, but all it takes is something to... It's your switch. You guys, man. I love animals, but bruv. I'm going to get myself a nice little... Actually, actually, I do like... I love Akitas. I love Akita dogs, yeah. I mean, that's probably what I would get. When I get but, I'll, but I have to make sure... I'm not going to let my little kids near it until like, you know, they get older. I'm not going to leave them alone. I'm, obviously, they can be near. But I'm going to make sure... Like, anyone that's alone with the dog can handle the dog. You know, the dog is well trained. That kind of stuff. Because you never know. I do like Akita's though, they're so cute. Cats. Dogs are commonly referred to as man's best friend, but in their absence, cats can also provide companionship cats, and make you know. wonderful pets. They're known for their adorable qualities. However, it's important to acknowledge that cats, like their larger relatives, the Bengal tiger or African lion, still possess some innate predatory instincts. In 2010, a distressing incident occurred involving Herbert Walden, who suffered a heart attack while caring for his 94-year-old mother resulting in her unfortunate death from dehydration as she relied on Herbert's assistance. When authorities arrived at the scene, they discovered piles of garbage and unclean conditions with cats roaming around the house. Due to a lack of food, the cats resorted to feeding on the deceased individuals. It remains unclear whether Herbert owned all the cats or if they were drawn to the premises due to the abundance of garbage. Ultimately, the carnivorous felines were taken to a local animal shelter. Bettina, the Black Widow Spider. 
How? You thought that snakes were the worst pets, huh? Huh, try venomous spiders like the Black Widow. In 2004, Mark Vogel, a German man, was found dead in his apartment. He was neither sick nor attacked by robbers, but was bitten by his pet Black Widow spider. Unfortunately for him, the heater housing the spiders and other insects had burst, and he didn't notice it because he was asleep. They crawled freely with most of them around his body. When authorities found his body, he had been dead for two weeks, and the insects made a meal out of his corpse. They found bits of him scattered around the house, and several large spiders nesting in the house. Disgusting. Oh, God. Humphrey the Hippo No doubt hippos are among the most dangerous animals on the planet. These giants are responsible for more human deaths in Africa than crocodiles, oh. but that's not all. They kill these giant reptiles and attack anything without provocation. Unfortunately for Marius Els, he didn't believe a hippo would hurt him. He thought they had negative publicity and would act right if treated right. Of course. He adopted Humphrey when he was only five months old and domesticated it. This didn't end well because the animal killed him after severely biting him. Humphrey also broke out of his pen many times and was responsible for killing calves on the property. South African authorities have since warned residents from keeping them as pets, since it's impossible to train them. Fuck's sake. Venomous snakes. <laughs> In 2004, one pet lover was bitten by one of her venomous pet snakes, believed to be a Yorudu pit viper. She oh, shared a God. modest home with nine poisonous oh. snakes and dozens of other dangerous what animals. What are you doing with nine poisonous snakes? What? Why? 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 No one, no two, no three, no four, no five, no six, no seven, no eight. But nine. Nine voice, voice, po poisonous venom snakes. Nine. What's that for? To impress people. Oh, I miss my snakes. Yes. And I bet you the snakes have cute names. Oh, yes, Sarah. Yes, Chloe. Yes, Paddy. Yes, Matt. Matt is very shy. On Tuesdays, he likes coming out. On Wednesdays, he probably, you know, we'll talk to you. Some stupid names for all these pets. Nine. I like, I don't mind snakes, but I'd rather go to the zoo and watch them with a bulletproof glass. True, but I know they're going to touch me. And then I go back home and sleep, knowing that there's no snake beside me. Obviously, I do have snakes, but they're friends. <laughs> Those like alligators, lizards, and other less dangerous snakes. After the viper bit her, she was rushed to a nearby hospital and later transferred to a larger one. She remained in critical condition until she died. Her neighbors called the authorities to do the needful around her home because more venomous snakes could be hiding there. God. They responded and brought three herpetologists from the local zoo to the house. When they arrived, they found reptiles roaming freely in the house. Some of the animals recovered from her home included the tegu lizard, an iguana, two Solomon Islands tree skinks, two alligators, and a rhinoceros. They also found venomous snakes under cloth piles and newspapers. Shiba Inu. Aww. Little, the owner of a Shiba Inu dog breed, woke up one afternoon to find his dog nibbling on his toes. Before he realized it, it had bitten off one of his toes. Little was diabetic and suffered a loss of sensation, so he didn't notice. Chewing the infected toe is the natural instinct of some dog breeds. Little was taken to the hospital where he received treatment for the injury. He returned home but was unhappy about his pet. He put it up for adoption. Once the process was finalized, the Shibu Inu was monitored for violent behavior. <laughs> Local animal control concluded My that guy. it wasn't dangerous, but had the urge to eat diseased toes. Until next time. I love that. I love that. You go back home and say, you know what? Fair enough. You didn't get me this time. You got you got you got a toe, but you're gone. Get get the fuck out of here. Get 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 out. That was good. That was interesting. So some animals in there like pigs and spiders. I knew spider could bite you, but I didn't know they're gonna eat you. Fucking uh yeah, let me know. Comment down below what you want me to check out next. This is very intriguing. We're going through a, a deep hole here and I'm loving it. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, check out their Patreon and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.